Hi, I'm Roger from Kanker Labs and today I'm going to show you our most simple but nevertheless quite versatile relay interface, the UniRel, which of course stands for Universal Relay. And uh, I'll show you how it works, with all, explain all the functions and show you some applications and demos uh, about what you can do with it. Um, as you can see, it's all through-hole technique, so it's easy to build one yourself because you can get it uh, not only fully assembled, but uh, also as a bare PCB or as a kit. And you can also build one from scratch because we also give you the board layout and the schematics, of course. So, let's start. So now let's take a closer look at the PC board and uh, some of its components. Of course, central to the interface is the relay itself, which is of the so-called cradle type. We choose quite a rugged version of this power relay by Italian-based company Finder, or Finder as you might pronounce it. So it's made in the EU and not a Chinese clone or something like that. And uh, you can rely on uh, that it really works to its spe specifications. As you perhaps can read, it's rated for 250 volts AC, which means you can switch loads which are connected to mains voltage. But whenever you have to do with mains voltage, you should be very careful either you know what you're doing or better you should let the wiring and the encasing of the circuit be done by an electrician or any other qualified personnel. We did design the whole circuit, uh, the, the components we choose, uh, the PCB layout, etc. Uh, so that uh, any uh, safety regulations are met, but uh, we cannot get a, an EU or UL certification for this because it's all open and not, uh, not wired. Uh, it has no case and uh, you have to uh, do that for yourself. So to be 100% sure, use it only with uh, small voltages up to 48 volts, uh, which are safe for touching and uh, where you cannot get killed or injured. The other ratings of uh, the relay are it can switch up to 8 amps, which translates uh, to about 2 kilowatts of switching capacity um, when it's connected to 230 volts mains voltage or if you live in a region where you have 110 or 120 volts mains voltage it can switch up to 1 kilowatts but there's another thing you should be aware of this spec only applies to resistive loads which means uh, a heater or something like that when you want to switch inductive loads the power rating is much lower. For example, if you're switching a motor with this relay, it's only specified for up to 300 watts switching capacity uh, at 230 volts mains voltage. So there's a big difference between what it can do, uh, what it can switch with resistive loads or with inductive loads. Um, Anyway, with lower voltages, you always can switch 8 amps DC. That's, that's no problems uh, at all if you're switching DC and non-resistive loads with lower voltages. So furthermore, you, you can see it has two separate changeover contacts. Changeover means you can see it here at the terminal blocks, you have, which are parallel to the contacts you can see here. You have one center connection and then one contact which, which is normally open and which closes when the relay is engaged and you have another contact which is normally closed and which opens when the relay is energized. You can of course 
to switch heavier loads you can parallel both contacts uh, when you put all the wiring to both terminal blocks of the two contacts. Later on I will still give you some tips how you can switch even multiple loads uh, with one contact or with two contacts in parallel. But there's, there are also some catches, so you cannot do it with every kind of load, but some kind of loads are suitable for being switched in parallel. You can see here that uh, it's energized with 12 volt DCs. Um, this we supply also on special order a 6 volt version. The, the, the other part of the circuit runs between 5 and 15 volts. So it depends on the type of relay you build in. Uh, if you uh, need 12 volts DC for a power supply or if you only want or only have uh, 6 volts power supply you can also use uh, or you have then you have to use a relay which is energized with 6 volts DC and uh, if you're wondering why we choose this quite high uh, profile well uh, first of all it's the most rugged version you can get with this cradle type which necessarily is quite high and uh, on the other side the transparent casing we also choose in purpose uh, because you either can use it for demonstration purposes because you can see when the switching contacts uh, move or when the middle center connection moves from the normally closed to the normally open position which is a kind of a separate control to see or to show someone when the, when the relay switches over. Uh, if you desperately need a lower profile relay you can also by special order uh, build in this uh, Schruck relay which is an Austrian based quality company and uh, it has nearly the same specification but it's not quite as rugged as this uh, Finder type relay. So the other uh, parts, the other components um, we used here are the switching tr transistor with uh, a protection diode here, the dual type flip-flop, some passive components and the jumper here, which I'll explain later, and the terminal blocks for the power supply, the push buttons and push button or direct uh, PC control of the different functions of the relay. So to demonstrate all of the functions of a Unirel, uh, I've put some wiring and some components uh, to the circuit board. Most notably probably here these two green and red LEDs which uh, demonstrate the green one when the normally open switch, uh, which is the off state, is energized and goes to on state, and in reverse the red LED for the normally closed uh, contact, uh, which is closed when the relay is not energized and in the off state. Uh, they are directly wired to the DC input, in this case, when we have a 12 volt relay, we also need 12 volt uh, DC power supply, uh, plus minus 2 volts. Um, you might wonder uh, where the current limiting resistor for the LEDs is. Well, they are special type and they don't need one because they have integrated um, current limiting resistors. Uh, the power supply needs to supply uh, 100 milliamps max, uh, that's uh, around 50 milliamps for the relay and uh, some milliamps here for the LED and the rest of the circuitry. So uh, nearly every DC power supply with 12 volts will do. 
Uh, furthermore, you see a push button which is connected to the uh, toggle or latching uh, input. And for the other three inputs, reset, set and direct PC input, uh, we don't need push buttons, um, but we will demonstrate it uh, simply with a wire uh, connecting them to the plus side of the power supply. So now let's turn power on. And the first thing we we'll notice is not only that the red LED goes on as expected, uh, but uh, it's no chance that uh, the circuit uh, is always in the off state when power is applied because we have an auto, auto power reset circuitry integrated uh, so that uh, the circuit is in a defined state always off, or the relay is always in the off state when power is applied. Now let's take a look uh, what happens when we activate the push button for the toggle functions and you see it uh, switches over to the on state which can be seen by uh, also by this control LED uh, which uh, always shows us when the relay is energized and in parallel now we can see that both green LEDs are of course turned on. And uh, you might have noticed there's no bouncing around uh, because we have an anti-bounce circuit built in so that uh, the state doesn't uh, bounce over between on and off uh, depending on the quality of your push button. But it always goes only once to the other state. Okay. Now what happens when we activate or when we connect either the reset input here with the plus side? Well, how, whatever state the uh, unirail was before, uh, after activating um, or after putting a positive signal uh, in, in, of from the either di directly with a push button from the power supply or from an external uh, signal as long as it has the same voltage or higher uh, because also we here we have also protection uh, against higher voltages so if you uh, feed a signal uh, with uh, in this case 12 volt or higher to the reset input, the flip-flop will always set the relay to the off state and the opposite of course when we activate the set functions um, of the flip-flop it is uh, the, the flip-flop is forced to go to the on state. Uh, once again off state, on state. No matter uh, what we had before so uh, you can put uh, many push buttons here in parallel. F for example, if you want to um, toggle the functions from many different places, you can put long wires with push buttons to, um, to different places. And uh, if you need a forced switch on or a forced switch off, that's the purpose or the function of the reset and the set input. And now the remaining input is the PC input and uh, uh, this one, let's show you, sets the relay to the on state as long as voltage is applied. And now you can see what bouncing is. You can see it here at the green LED or at the uh, brighter LEDs here at the relay contacts that it's, there's a heavy bouncing because here, of course, we could not put any anti-bouncing circuit. And the f uh, this input can only set the relay to high. Uh, it cannot, by connecting it um, to ground, as we can see, it cannot reset or set the uh, the flip-flop 
to the low state, it only can switch to the on state. As you can see, again, the bouncing. So uh, that's because uh, we have uh, a diode which uh, transmits only positive voltages and we have a pull down resistor here for the switching transistor which keeps uh, the input in the low state or in the off state when uh, the PC uh, input is connect not connected or not used at all. Now there's one final uh, function that's this little jumper here. Uh, it is now set or connected or closed and you could see that I can use all three functions, the toggle or latching functions, the set and reset, forced on and off functions and the PC input. Now if we uh, don't want the upper three functions, toggle, reset and set, uh, then we put the jumper off and now as we can see the push button has no more function. The set and reset don't have any functions anymore. And the only function is the positive signal on the PC will set the relay to on as long as it is applied. So with this combination of functions, I think that a lot of problems you have or a lot of applications you have with uh, switching one or more loads on and off, depending on if you have, depending on if you have uh, either push buttons or you have uh, outputs from other circuitry which give a positive signal. Uh, I think uh, that you can solve a lot of problems or use it in a lot of applications uh, where you need more than one function or one special function like this uh, toggle or latching functions. Let's put the jumper on again. Yeah, that's it. Now let's take a look at the circuit diagram, how this all uh, works and how the circuit is built up and how the protection and the anti-bouncing and the um, auto power on reset, how it all works with uh, quite a few um, components. So I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you want to get one, uh, the links to our shop and also to our forum where you can leave questions and suggestions uh, are all down below, as well as the links to download all the documentation, the schematics, etc. And in a future video, I'll still explain how it all works, uh, how the functions are realized in hardware and give you some further tips and how you can expand the capabilities uh, of the relay interface with some simple tricks. And uh, well, then we'll see you again. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up and uh, hope to see you next time. Bye.